Hi, Timothy Younger here, and in this video, I want to demonstrate some of the math functions available in C++. So let's get started. Okay, so first off, I'm going to include the main header file, the iostream header file, just like that. And I'm also going to include a header file called math.h, and we need this to include these math functions. I'm also going to indicate to the program that we're using the standard namespace by typing using namespace std. And I'm going to create my main function here. And within my main function, I'm going to print to the screen these functions. Uh, so I'm going to type c out. And then the first function I'm going to talk about is the absolute value function. So I'm going to type abs. And then within parentheses, the value of the number we want to, you want to take the absolute value of. So in this case, I'm going to take the absolute value of negative 10. And then we'll end the line just like that and we'll return zero at the end of the main function. Okay, I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna open up the terminal and I'm going to compile this with G++ and then math function underscore functions dot C++ a dash O for output and then the name of the file math functions. Okay, that's gonna be the output. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and compile and I've compiled that and now I'm gonna run it and I get 10. Okay. All right. Let's exit out of here. You also might see FABS. And this is for a floating point absolute value. So if I did negative 10.5, this is going to give me 10.5. So I'm going to open up a terminal and I'm going to run it and compile and I get 10.5. Okay. Another function you might see is floor. Okay. Floor is going to give the lower value. So in this case, when I take the, it's going to go to the lower integer. So when I take the floor of negative 10.5, I'm actually going to get negative 11, which at first glance might seem like a higher number, but remember it's negative. So negative 11 is, is lower than negative 10.5. All right. So let's um, open, actually, let me save this first. Now let's open up a terminal and let's compile and let's run and we get negative 11. Now, if I change this to just 10.5, now it's going to give me 10 after I compile and run. So it gives me 10. We also, in addition to floor, we have seal, which is going to go up to the next integer. So this would give me positive 11 if I take the seal of 10.5. So if I compile this and then run, I get 11. Now, if I do the ceiling of negative 10.5, it's going to give me negative 10, which again, negative 10 is a higher number than negative 10.5. So save it and run it, compile it, and run and we get negative 10. Okay. So that's seal and floor. You can also do the square root. So let's say we had 16 in parentheses and to do the square root, we type S Q R T. So this should give us a square root of 16, which would be four. So let's go and compile and run and we get four. Okay. We can also do the cube root, which is C, C, B, R, T. And so the cube root of 27 is three because three times three times three is 27. So let's open up a terminal, compile and rerun, and we get three there. Okay, so that's square root and cube root. The next thing I wanna talk about is the exponent function. Now this doesn't quite isn't quite what it seems. So uh, this is raising the constant e to whatever we put in parentheses here. So if we do uh, exponent squared, that's really e squared. Okay, so that e is Euler's constant. Okay, so we compile this and we um, square e squared is 7.38906. Um, similarly to that, we have the log function, which is actually the natural logarithm. So if we do the natural logarithm of 
the exponent function raised to the first power, which is e to the first power, we're going to get 1 in this case. They're inverse functions of one another. So let's just do that. And we get 1. Okay. If we don't want to do just 1, we can you know, do some other number. So what's the nat natural logarithm of, say, 100? If we open up the terminal here, compile and run, we get 4.6 and a few extra. Okay, so that's the natural logarithm of 100. Okay, um, we also have this hypot function. And what this does is it takes in the legs of a triangle. So let's say we have a Pythagorean triple, three, four, five. If we take in the legs, three and four, it's going to return the hypotenuse back five. Okay, so it's going to do the Pythagorean theorem for us. All right, so let's open up the terminal here, run it, and we get five. Okay, so that's the hypotenuse function. We also have the round function, which is just going to round a number. So let's take 10.3. Let's uh, save it, and let's open up a terminal here and compile and run and we get 10 okay now if we say this is six we recompile and rerun we get 11 so it rounds to the nearest integer okay there's also the max function so if we have two numbers and we want to figure out the max of the two numbers maybe you have two inputs from a user and you pass those inputs into the max function it's going to tell which one is the max so let's say we do two and one here, it's going to return two after we compile and run it. We're going to get two. We also have a function called the min function. So this is going to return the minimum value of two numbers. So if we run, if we compile and then run this one, we're going to get one. Okay. So that's the max and the min. And finally, the last ones I want to talk about are f min and f max. So, you know, this can be uh, floating point numbers like this, and it's going to return the minimum, which in this case is going to be 1.8. Okay. And we can also do f max, okay, which should return 2.2. returns 2.2. All right, so those were some examples of some of the available math functions in C++. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, could you please give it a like as it will help get out to more people. I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.